Hello guys, a warm greeting to all the crypto enthusiasts. Welcome to the Crypto Mega Primer for Hackers. We'll be dealing with Advanced Encryption Standard in detail. AES or Advanced Encryption Standard, also known as RINDEAL, is one of the most widely used methods for encrypting and decrypting sensitive information. This encryption method uses what is known as a block cipher algorithm to ensure the data can be securely stored. It is used worldwide today from NASA to Apple and by all the people who care about encryption. AES was initially standardized by National Institute of Standards and Technology NIST, to protect sensitive information. It is accepted worldwide as a desirable algorithm to protect data. It is part of a family known as block cipher which operates on block size of 128 bits. Since AES is symmetric, it uses same key for both encryption as well as decryption. But AES allow for three different key lengths, 128, 192 or 256 bits. Like DES, AES is an iterated block cipher in which plain text is subjected to multiple rounds of processing with each round applying the same overall transformation function to the incoming block. The number of rounds differ with the key length. As you can see here, the AES encryption works on individual block length of 16 bytes. The encryption further follows the variation based on the method of implementations. Here we have the diagram of one single block. Inside each block, the key and the corresponding block of ciphertext are used to create an internal cipher, which then gives the ciphertext of one block. Thus, it follows the divide and rule methodology. One important thing to note is that one bit change results in the entire block being shuffled. The time taken for encryption is relatively less in comparison with the algorithm proposed in the literature. Further, AES provides resistance to known attacks. Some other points to note is the speed and code compactness, design simplicity and the overall cost of implementation. One of the most important thing about AES is it was internationally accepted and quickly gained popularity in the field of encryption. Some of its common application can be seen in archives and compression tools which include 7-zip, pkzip, rar, winzip. Another would be disk partition encryption. All the system disk encryption tools run on AES. Even the Windows BitLocker, File Vault, Descriptor, Veracrypt or even your MIUI file encryption system works on AES. It also provides end-to-end -end encryption. An amazing fact is that almost all the online messaging service which you use rely on AES for security. Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, Google Allo and whatnot. In addition to just software implementation, even the common hardware uses AES for security. We have Intel, AMD, Spark and Qualcomm which uses AES instruction set. In addition to mere internals of AES, we have different modes of operation, each unique with different properties. New modes of encryption are made to overcome the fault in the previous one. As of now, we will discuss only 5 basic modes of operation. We have ECB, otherwise known as Electronic Codebook, CBC or Cypher Blockchaining, CFB, Cypher Feedback, OFB, Output Feedback and CTR, known as Counter. AES ECB The first mode is the simplest of all 5 modes. The figure shows the scheme where it can be seen that a block of plain text is encrypted with the same key. The term codebook is used because for a given key, there is a unique ciphertext for each block of plain text. Assume we can imagine a gigantic codebook in which there is an entry for every possible plain text pattern showing its corresponding ciphertext. If the message is longer than the block length, then the procedure is to break the message into blocks of required length that too by padding the last block if necessary. As with encryption, the encryption is performed one block at a time, always using the same key. The ECB method is ideal for small amount of data, such as the encryption key. However, for large messages, if the same plain text block appears more than once, then the same ciphertext is produced. This may assist an attacker. In a gist, the ECB mode of encryption is parallelizable, which means you can encrypt each block of the plain text simultaneously. Also, it allows random read access, which means at any point of time, you can decrypt any specific block of plain text without decrypting the previous or the one which comes after that. 
Before we move on to the further modes of encryption, we'll have to take a quick look into padding. A block cipher works on units of a fixed size, known as a block size. But messages come in variety of lengths. So some modes, namely ECB and CBC, require that the final block be padded before encryption. Thus the official definition of padding will be, padding is a way to take data that may or may not be a multiple of the block size for the cipher and extend it out so that it is. Coming to the second mode of encryption, we would like that same plain text block produce different cipher text blocks for the case of security. Cipher block chaining, as you can see in figure, allows this by XORing each plain text block with the cipher text of the previous block. This would result in same plain text blocks producing different cipher text blocks. Note that for the first plain text block, there is no previous cipher text block. Instead, we use something known as initialization vector. Similar is the case of decryption, where the process is inverted. First block of ciphertext is decrypted and sorted with the IV to retrieve the first block of plain text. Similarly, second block after decrypting is sorted with the first block of ciphertext. The outline The encryption process is not parallelizable. Instead, the decryption process is. Further, it also allows random read access. An initialization vector, IV, or starting variable is a block of bits that is used by several modes to randomize the encryption and hence produce distinct ciphertext even if the same plain text is encrypted multiple times without the need to slow a rekeying process. The use of IV is to prevent repetition in data encryption, leaving no traces or patterns in ciphertext. We'll take a quick look into CFV and OFV. The cipher feedback and Output feedback allows the block cipher to be converted into a stream cipher. This eliminates the need to pad a message to be an integral number of blocks. This can also operate in real time. Similar to CBC, the decryption in CFV is parallelizable unlike the encryption process. Also, it allows random read access. The OFV mode is similar in structure to that of CFV. As can be seen, it is the output of the encryption function that is fed back to the shift register in OFB, whereas in CFB, the ciphertext unit is fed back to the shift register. One advantage of OFB method is that bit errors in transmission do not propagate. CFB, OFB and CTR modes do not require any special measures to handle messages whose lengths are not multiples of the block size, since the mode works by sorting the plain text with the output of the block cipher. A counter equal to the plain text block size is used. The only requirement stated in the standard is that the counter value must be different for each plain text block. Typically, this counter is initialized to some value and then incremented by one for each subsequent blocks. For encryption, the counter is encrypted and then sorted with the plain text to produce the ciphertext block. There is no chaining. This mode contains a number of advantages include hardware efficiency, software efficiency, provable security, and simplicity. As you can see, both encryption and decryption is parallelizable and also it allows random read access. One of the foremost thing to note is the disadvantage of ECB. The disadvantage of this method is a lack of diffusion. Because ECB encrypts identical plain text into identical ciphertext blocks, it does not hide data patterns. In some senses, it doesn't provide serious message confidentiality and it is not recommended for use in cryptographic protocols at all. The image on the right is how the image might appear encrypted with CBC, CTR or any of the other more secure modes, indistinguishable from random noise. Note that the random appearance of the image on the right does not ensure that the image has been securely encrypted. Thank you for spending your valuable time with us. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching this video. Please leave a like and comment if you have any suggestions. Subscribe to the channel for more exciting content. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and Facebook.